What is up, Flavor Family? It is Bobby back at the grocery store. Where's the beef, baby? It's all right here. This video is all about grass-fed beef, why you wanna eat it, the health benefits, and why now more than ever has been a more accessible time to get grass-fed beef at a very affordable price pretty much wherever you live in the country. Before we kind of break down why you wanna be eating grass-fed beef, I just wanna talk about a few meat principles you might wanna have in the back of your mind. Now that summer is here, you're gonna be grilling burgers and steaks and all that stuff. So when you buy ground beef, always look for 80-20 beef to fat ratio. That's gonna be nice and juicy and have a good amount of fat in there. I notice a lot of people, they keep reaching for this 90-10, that's too lean. It's gonna overcook, it doesn't have that nice beefy flavor, and it's actually more expensive. The leaner one is 50 cents more expensive per pound. Um, when you're buying ground beef, look for ground chuck. Never buy ground round. That's from the old Heine region, and it's too lean and too tough. Even better, if you can go to a specialty butcher shop, and if they have blends of ground beef, my favorite blend for a burger ever is ground chuck, ground brisket, ground short rib. It's fatty, it's juicy, it's delicious, it's so good. Um, also, when you're buying steaks, like these grass-fed steaks here, do me a favor, read the label. Never buy steaks that are blade tenderized. That means they take a steak and they have this little jacquard, which is a bunch of little needles that punch it all over, and it makes the steak more tender. That might be uh, allowable for like a tough steak, but a nice steak like a ribeye or a filet, all that's doing is introducing bacteria into the meat. And then when you cook it, you actually have to cook it to like medium to medium well. There's a store, uh, one of the warehouse clubs that does that to almost all their cuts, including prime. And it really bugs me out because you have to cook it way, way past medium rare. So keep that in mind too. Now that we got those principles out of the way, grass fed beef, right? It's becoming more and more vogue now because consumer demand is higher, but that means the producers are gonna trick us. First trick to keep an eye out for is grass-fed. Well, that doesn't always mean grass-fed, grass-finished. There's two things you have to look for on a packet. It has to say 100% grass-fed beef. This one does it, but when I turn it over, it says it on the back, 100% grass-fed, or it has to say grass-fed, grass-finished. Why is that important? Because a lot of these purveyors now, they're trying to sneak you know, a lot of tricks by us, but we're too smart for that, right? Because what they do is they grass feed the cattle for say 90% of their life. The last three months, they put grain in there, grain and uh, corn and soy. Why do they do that? To fatten them up, to get them to the market much quicker, get more money in their pocket. The problem is when you do that, you reverse almost all of the grass fed benefits in the first place. So it's a total waste of your money and they're feeding it GMO corn and GMO soy. So that's really, really bad news. So always look for 100% grass fed and grass finished or grass fed and grass finished. Grass fed also does not mean organic. There's actually two different kinds right here. Regular grass fed and organic grass fed ground beef. The organic one's gonna mean it's never had any antibiotics or anything like that. Last week, my friend Paul and I, who you're gonna see in a second, went down to all grass farms in Dundee, Illinois. And Farmer Cliff showed us his beautiful pasture with the cattle grazing. When cattle are grazing out and about, they're eating the grass, they're pruning the grass, they're depositing, depositing manure, they're stamping that manure down into the ground. It's really good for the environment and they're outside getting vitamins and sunshine and they're healthier, cleaner. You never hear about um, outbreaks of E. coli and stuff from grass-fed beef. You hear it from confined cattle that are inside pooping on each other, eating grain. Um, Farmer Cliff had some great points about that and why you want to be having grass-fed pasture-raised beef because it's better for the environment. Well, I mean, you know, it goes back into the whole carbon sequestration issue. As long as this grass is growing, it's absorbing, you know, carbon out of the atmosphere and putting it back into the soil. If they're sitting on a feedlot, you got to think about it. So that land is not ever going to grow anything. You know, they're having to scrape the poop up right. and then transport it somewhere. Whereas here, they're depositing their poop all through the field and peeing all over the field, which is adding to the fertility. Yeah. In addition, grass-fed beef is way better for you health-wise. It has six times the amount of omega-3 fatty acids, the good ones, and lower omega-6s, the bad ones. It has twice the amount of CLAs, conjugated linoic acids, which have a whole host of health benefits, including anti-cancer properties. And it has vitamin A, E, and antioxidants, when cattle are eating corn and soy, especially GMO, they don't have a nearly that amount of nutrients and you're essentially eating those GMO corn and soy also. Now, 
to bring in some more interesting information. You guys know him as the Chicken Man, the Egg Man. It's Paul Sipple from Paul's Two Cents to break down Thank some you. more info on grass-fed beef. This whole question of why should I pay more perfectly explains how we've lost that visceral connection we have with our food. So what Joel Salatin talks about is this idea of moving, mobbing, and mowing. So cows, as we've seen on Farmer Cliffs Farm, all grass farms, are meant to move. And it's important for them to move because they're supposed to prune the grass. They are nature's pruning mechanisms. And when the cows are constantly moving throughout the farm, they're naturally pruning the grass so it remains in its optimal state, the teenage grass, for the longest period of time. Cows get a bad rap. There are some politicians that have talked about cows emitting gases and they're bad for the environment. And look, we're not trying to convert you politically, but I will tell you that cows are not inherently bad for the environment. It's the way in which the cows are managed that cause all those problems because those factory farm cows they don't actually operate on grass they don't go anywhere near grass so they can't help restart that biomass accumulation cycle and can't help foster carbon sequestration so I'll end with this why don't we put just as much time into selecting our farmer as we do our doctor and I'll let you well said Paul. I'll let you continue uh, speaking of the farmer Check out what uh, Farmer Cliff from Allgrass had to say about the microbiome or like the stomach bacteria of the soil every time you have to till up the soil and plant new corn and new soy every year for grain fed cattle. You know, people will say, oh, cows are bad, they're bad for the environment. Well, no, it's really the way that we've managed those cows yeah. that's been bad for the environment. You know, to raise feed for those animals, now you're raising, you know, it's going to be corn and soybeans that you're using, which is an annual crop. They have to be tilled every year. And that requires a big tractor and lots of equipment and all the, not only the emissions from that diesel tractor that go into the air, but all the transportation of that product to the feedlot, you know, so you're running a truck and you're having to process all that into feed when the, you could have them self-harvest their own feed. It's night and day. I mean, when you have to till up that soil every year, you're just, yeah. you're really, essentially you're mining all the minerals and the nutrients out of that soil. And eventually that soil is going to be depleted, which is what's happening to most of our soils globally. And then going back to the cost of grass-fed beef. Well, look, yeah, the sticker price is more. It's five forty-eight per pound versus conventional grain-fed beef is three fifty-eight. So about $2 more per pound. But is it really more expensive, like Paul mentioned earlier? Number one, your body's deriving way more nutrition out of there. Number yeah. two, you're not going to get sick and go to the doctor down the road, something True. you really have to think about. And number three... Uh, these cattle are not polluting the environment. These mass commercial farms that stuff the cows inside, they never move, they eat corn, soy, they poop like crazy. It is so common for that poop to go into rivers and lakes. What's the cost associated with that to clean it up? It's really, really a big problem that you have to start thinking big picture. And another thing also is some people like to know where their meat from comes from. Well, a lot of times in the grocery store, even with grass fed, it could be a combination of US, South America, and Australia. If you really care about buying locally sourced, Paul and I are big advocates of eatwild.com. Mm -hmm. We'll put that link in the description box. You can buy grass fed beef from local farmers who supply co-ops and a farmer's market in your city. You don't have to go to the farm like we did to, uh, to Chris, yes. right? And I want to remind everyone, we're going to post the link to the farm to table list again uh -huh. that I came up list. with. Yes. I've compiled an extensive list of restaurants, bakeries, caterers, grocery stores, juice bars, delivery services, and farms all throughout the Midwest, including detailed information about their practices. Uh, and these places all source from these local and or sustainable farms. Sustainable is not just a buzzword. We've gone into great deal about what sustainable means, and we've posted that on a Google document, all for you to use, and it's free. Uh, and last but not least, one tip about cooking grass-fed beef is that it cooks up 30% quicker than corn-fed or grain-fed beef. So how do you know you're not overcooking your burger or your steak? Buy a probe thermometer. I'm going to put a link down in the description box. You've seen me use this thing in every one of my videos for years. Mm -hmm. It goes in the meat. It can stay in there in the oven, on the grill, and you will never overcook your beautiful grass-fed steak or your burger again. So guys, that is it. Perfect. That is why you want to eat and buy grass-fed beef, and it's never been a more exciting time to actually have access to it. I'm going to put the uh, info down in the description box for the health facts, Paul's list, uh, a link yes. to the video from the farm last week. All that good stuff and the resources you need to buy grass-fed beef and know why you're buying it. Uh, we got two more videos going below us right now. Paul and I reviewed chicken. We reviewed eggs. What next? I don't know. We got to hit the books. 
Paul's got to scour the comments to see what the next one is. Yes. But we will see you very soon. Until then, hashtag keep on cooking. Mad love and peace, y'all.